I had an unusual visitor on Christmas Day 2008, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't Santa Claus passing by my house in Bloomington, Indiana. The day started in typical fashion with the opening of gifts around the Christmas tree. I served an early Christmas dinner for my family and friends, and everybody departed by 5 p.m., except my sister and brother-in-law who lived with me. They were sleeping in a bedroom at the end of the hall with the door open. I went into my bedroom with my dog, Toby, and I shut the door securely. I was just dozing off when I heard the latch on my bedroom door open. I waited several seconds for my sister or brother-in-law to ask me whatever they came to say, but there was no other sound, and it was almost 7 p.m., so my bedroom was pitch black and I saw nothing. I left the lights on in the kitchen and in the bathroom, and there were tons of Christmas lights in the living room, so the hallway would have been well lit. I would have been able to see whoever was at the door just by lifting my head. I pushed the blanket down and lifted my head from the pillow. But just as I would have been able to see who was in the doorway, an extremely bright light hit me right in the eyes. I shielded my eyes and yelled, Turn out that fucking light! You're blinding me! The light immediately disappeared, and I heard the bedroom door latch close. My bedside light is a touch lamp, so I tapped it on and looked around the bedroom. There was no one in the bedroom except me and Toby. Toby jumped off the bed and went to the door without showing any signs of alarm. At first I was frightened because Toby is a Dutch Shepherd well-trained to be an excellent watchdog and proven a personal protection dog. Since Toby was already up, I decided to let him outside and see what sis or brother-in-law needed. When I went to the hallway, I could see both of them still in bed. I took Toby to the living room to let him outside, and there was nobody there either. So who opened my door and turned a spotlight on my face? Like most people, the thoughts of loved ones are always close at hand during the holiday season. When I first went to lie down, I was thinking of how happy I was with my small family how we all had enjoyed a pleasant Christmas. It would have been so much better if my mother and brother were still alive to spend it with us. I would like to think it was my brother's spirit stopping by to say, Merry Christmas, I still think of you too. I haven't been able to debunk this strange event or find any logical explanation. I'm half afraid that my heart stopped during my sleep and the light I saw was a bright light people report of after near-death experiences. (laughs) Leave it to me to see the stairway of heaven and ruin my chance at external paradise by saying, turn out that fucking light. (laughs) I've made a mental note that if I ever see another bright light, I've made a mental note that if I ever see another bright light to clean up my language, just in case. The evil God made houses of his flesh just for fun. The evil God ate them with pleasure. They feared the evil God who had made them, only to devour them later. No one wanted to be picked for the next cool experiment the evil God had in mind for them. It's a cruel world the evil God had created for them, and all the gingerbread people knew it. My mother, to whom I was very close, passed away in 1964 when I was 17 years old. I left home that year and moved from Ontario to Nova Scotia. In 1969, I met a girl whom I would call Karen, and we got married in the March of 1970. In December of 1971, we were expecting our first child. We were living in a small one, one one-half bedroom bungalow. There was a fireplace in the living room. My wife and I loved that fireplace, and we had it lit every night. It was Christmas Eve 1971, and we had just finished putting gifts under the tree. And the nice fire gave off a beautiful glow. On the tree, one string of lights, which was supposed to flash, had stopped working several days before. It was five minutes to midnight when the fireplace suddenly just went out, and the string of lights started to flash. And the other lights stopped flashing. My wife and I were sitting on the floor, and it became very chilly in the room. I looked over to my lazy boy chair, and I saw a figure sitting there. My mother, with a big, beautiful smile on her face. My wife, who had never met my mother, said she could see the same thing. This ghost never spoke, but just kept looking at me and my wife and smiling. At 12 midnight, the fire in the fireplace started up again, and the lights on the tree stopped flashing, and the others started flashing again. I looked over in the chair, and the ghost was gone. No matter what I did to those Christmas lights, they never flashed again. My parents and I lived in a small home that was around 90 years old. The year would have been 1996. We lived there from the time I was 7 years old to the time I was 19. From the very day that we moved in, I felt that I was not alone. One year, around Christmas time, I was having a friend spend the night. The heat had just shut off briefly and she and I were sitting in the living room watching television when the temperature suddenly dropped. As I rose to turn up the heat, the Christmas tree began to shake violently. Ornaments were falling off right and left, and she and I were terrified. We ran upstairs to lay on my bed. My white cat curled up with us, and my door was open slightly. 
When I gazed out at the dark hallway, I was horrified to see a tall white figure run down the hall. I turned to my friend and she acknowledged that she had seen the exact same thing. She never spent the night ever again. It was Christmas time of 1995, or 96, at my aunt's house on a reservation in North Dakota. Some of my family was in the living room watching television, and the kids were in their rooms or sleeping. And my uncle's aunt and I were sitting at the table putting a puzzle together. My cousin, who worked at a casino, would come home around midnight or 1 a.m. This night, as she pulled up and was walking toward the house, she looked in the window and saw me sitting at the table, my aunt sitting across from me, and someone standing to the left of me, and someone standing in the corner. So she continued to walk in the house, thinking nothing of it. As we were sitting there talking, she looked at me and asked who was standing next to me a few minutes ago, and who was in the corner. I told her no one, and she said, yeah, there was someone standing next to you. It looked like it was your mom, and she was playing with your hair. She said this person was running her hand through my hair, like a mother does to a child. It kind of freaked me out, being I was probably only 12 or 13 at the time. My cousin swears up and down that someone was standing over me, rubbing my head, and watching me put the puzzle together with my aunt and uncle. And that there was another person behind this person. We got around to thinking it was probably her mom she saw. Her mom passed away a week before Christmas in 1992. In my family, we consider our aunts and uncles to be just like our moms and dads. After thinking it could have been her, it didn't scare me so much. However, we couldn't figure out who the person was standing in the corner. And always around Christmas time, something strange would always happen. And we just think it's her visiting us. <laughs>